Mr. President, I come to the floor today to oppose the Democrats' radical agenda. For weeks now, America has been breaking records with cases of coronavirus. The scavenger hunt for tests and resulted in long lines and empty shelves. We've just had the worst jobs report of the year last year with inflation at a 40-year high. Crime's out of control in big cities run by Democrats. The southern border has been overrun by hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants every single month. Our foreign policy is in shambles. Our friends are encouraged, and Vladimir Putin and China and North Korea and Iran are emboldened. The American people are deeply worried about all of these issues. Democrats in Washington are offering no solutions on these pressing problems. Democrats created many of these crises in the first place, often through incompetence, mismanagement, and weakness. Now, under President Biden, they're making them worse. Democrats just spent five months trying to pass the most expensive spending bill in American history. It's a bill nobody asked for except for the radical base of professional activists. The bill would have led to the largest tax increase in 50 years, trillions of dollars in new spending and new debt, and even higher inflation. And Democrats tried to pass this on the narrowest of margins. Democrats failed, and, and as soon as the bill was pronounced dead, Democrats scrambled to change the subject. Democrats know they can't solve the inflation crisis, the supply chain crisis, the coronavirus crisis, and many of the other disasters created by the Biden administration. By ignoring these problems, they're practically admitting that, as Democrats, they have no solutions. So what are they doing instead? Well, they've tried to manufacture another crisis. They've invented a phony moral panic about election laws. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have repeatedly lied about our elections. They got Major League Baseball to move the All-Star game to a Democrat state. They got Hollywood stars and journalists and wealthy corporations to parrot their talking points. Now they've got former Presidents Obama and Clinton to get involved. It's been a shameful effort to frighten the American people and further divide our nation. When Joe Biden was a, pre was a presidential candidate, he said he would, quote, heal the country. He said he would, quote, restore the soul of the nation. Just one year into his presidency, we found out that was all for show. Joe Biden has been one of the most divisive and partisan presidents in American history. And today, he's on track to be the least popular president in modern times. I understand why Democrats are desperate to change the subject. Yet Democrats are failing on the election issue as well. Democrats think they can win on the idea of a federal election takeover. They're wrong. Joe Biden is so unpopular in Georgia, he couldn't even get Stacey Abrams to show up at his rally in Atlanta. She's running for governor. She's a political celebrity. Election law is her main issue. Yet she wouldn't be seen in public with Joe Biden. And frankly, I don't blame her. Two days later, Joe Biden came to Capitol Hill to convince Democrats to change the rules of the Senate. He failed again. Brave Democrat senators did the honorable and courageous thing. They kept their word. They said they would not destroy this institution for short-term partisan gain. They deserve the respect of every member of this body. Joe Biden tried to push him around, and he failed. The latest Quinnipiac poll has Joe Biden with a 33 percent approval rating just one year into his term in office. He has lower economic approval ratings than Jimmy Carter. Yet Senator Schumer asked Democrat senators to follow Joe Biden over the cliff. Yesterday, in his almost two-hour press conference, President Biden talked about taking his message on the road and campaigning with Democrat candidates. I want to see what Democrat candidates actually want to stand with him as more and more members of the House announce their retirements, because they know and they can see the writing on the wall. 
Senator Schumer wanted a vote in this body on a Washington election takeover and on changing the rules of the Senate. American people have utterly rejected both of these ideas. The vast majority of American people support voter identification. If you want a ballot, show your ID. They support making voters show a photo ID in order to get the ballot. This includes a majority of the Democrats who think it's an important thing to do for ballot integrity and accountability and security. Democrats want to fix our election laws. They ought to do something about what's happening in the majority leader's hometown. Just last month, New York City Council voted to let 900,000 non-citizens vote in New York City elections. Non-citizens. It's the largest group. This is a larger group than the majority, than the, than the margin of victory in this last New York mayoral election. In other words, this new group of voters who are not citizens of the United States could swing and determine the outcome of the next election for mayor of New York. It's the majority leader's hometown. Where's the in ballot integrity, accountability, and security there for American citizens? But Chuck Schumer lectures the American people about our elections, and he ought to fix the problems in his own hometown. Democrats are okay with vaccine passports, and they're okay with non-citizens voting, but they're not okay with voter ID, at least on the legislation that they brought to the floor. Democrats continue to fail to listen to and to fail the American people. Democrats are failing on inflation, on coronavirus, on immigration, on crime, and on national security. By voting on elections and on Senate rules, Democrats are admitting they have absolutely nothing to offer the American people on the key issues and concerns that are impacting the lives of people all across this country. But there's plenty of work to do right now. We have to stop unnecessary government spending to get inflation under control. We need to support law enforcement. We need affordable energy. That's what people want. We need to make sure that our schools stay open. We need to make sure that they teach our children skills, not ideology. We need to secure our border. So yeah, there's plenty of work for this Senate to do. Republicans have been more than willing to work with Democrats on all of these important issues. The American people are looking for solutions, yet the majority leader is giving them pointless exercises and show votes. It's time for the majority leader to abandon this political wish list. Let's get to work on the issues facing the American people. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.